Hey, want to throw pots outside? Watch my video and I'll show you what you need. So the first thing you're going to need is a pottery wheel. You're going to need a miniature pottery wheel because it'll be really difficult to take a full-size pottery wheel outside with you. So you have a couple of options. The first option is you can buy a mini pottery wheel. So we got this one on Amazon for around 50 bucks. You can find pottery wheels on Amazon and eBay. I can't recommend the ones that uh, are powered by a USB. Get the ones that plug into a wall. So this is one that we bought on Amazon. It's awesome, um, but I found that it didn't have a lot of torque. So when you go to center, the wheel would stop spinning. So I made my own. So this is your other option. You can make your own pottery wheel. It's not that hard. I downloaded this book by Maddie Garrig Shelley that you can go to her website, uh, maddiegarrigshelley.com, and you can order it, you can download it. The things that she recommends that you buy on Amazon, they're not there anymore, so just you'll have to use your best guesses on like eBay for the worm gear motor and the rheostat, which is a little annoying, but it does have a lot of torque, and I can have reverse, I can go forward, and I can adjust the speed, which is super handy. Something that's really handy to have but isn't completely necessary is a little table to put your uh, mini pottery wheel on when you're outside. Now, the way I made this one is I took a tripod and I took off the head and I got a piece of plexi and bolted it into this uh, pipe and it fits right in where the head of the tripod was. What's nice about having something like this is that you can throw pottery sitting down, you can stand up by, by a lake and make pottery. Now, another essential part of making miniature ceramics outside is clay. So I have a little bit here. Now, a bag of clay that you can fire in a kiln is going to cost you around $25. This is a Cone 6 earthenware clay, and the reason I have that is because I don't, I don't have a kiln, so I went out and found a place that does uh, ceramic lessons, pottery lessons, and the lady that runs it agreed to let me fire miniature ceramics in her kiln when she fires her students' work, and she uses this earthenware clay and so that it fires just like all the rest of the stuff that she's putting in the kiln I am using the clay that she uses for her own project because it's not my kiln I don't want to mess it up so cone 6 earthenware is what I'm using though a lot of people who throw mini uh, ceramics prefer porcelain which is cone 10 so you don't have to leave it white I chose a white body you can color it if you want um, fill a cone six clay and you can mix it with the other clays that you've colored and you can mix it with the white clay body which is what I do just to add a little fun to the ceramics I make outside. This is mason stains. Mason stains come in a rainbow of colors. This one happens to be green. It's a powder. This is about a quarter of a pound and in miniature ceramics this will last you literally forever and ever and ever. So here's the powdered mason stain. This is green. And all you're going to do is you get a lump of clay, a little lump, and you spoon in mason stain just a little bit at a time and then you mix it and knead it into your clay and it changes color. So you don't have to use anything fancy to throw miniature ceramics. Uh, to open up uh, a cake that I've centered, I use the end of this paintbrush, which works really well. One more tool that you probably didn't think of is sandpaper. This is really handy for greenware to get the flat bottoms once you've cut it off, because I know sometimes I mess up. 
and have an uneven bottom so I use the sandpaper just to uh, flatten it and also once your ceramics have been bisque fired it's good to go in you might need some sandpaper to sand the rough edges that you couldn't get when it was green wear because it's so fragile one of the essential things you're going to need is this like battery pack uh, we got this on Amazon. It was around a hundred bucks, but totally worth it. It's for camping. So now I can plug in my wheel to this pack and turn it on. Um, from a hundred percent charge, I can run this thing for hours. Now what? It's mushy clay. How do you get it off the wheel head? How do you even start to trim it? Well, you got to heat it up. So I have this lighter, it's well used, <laughs> that I got at the hardware store. Um, I like it because it, it's like a little blowtorch. And um, it really heats up and you heat up your clay and it dries it out. And it's going to dry it out so that you're able to carve it and even remove it from the wheel head. So you've dried it out enough, you've carved your base and you've removed it from the wheel head. How do you get it home without breaking it? I'm a huge klutz and I smushed like two or three things before I finally figured this out. I use these little Tupperware containers. It says dough because I also do tiny cooking. So just ignore that it says dough. Um, I like them. They're lock and lock, so they're double locking. And I just filled, filled it with toilet paper. <laughs> so once I have the clay and it's basically fairly dry, I can place the greenware in here and put the lid on and nothing's going to knock it around. Once you've thrown your pottery out in the wild, you're going to want to get it fired. So once you've made it, that's called greenware. It's still just dried mud. You're going to find a place that has a ceramic kiln. You're going to give it to them. They're going to fire it the first time. That's turning it into bisque ware. Now you can handle it. Now you can glaze it. A lot of my pieces have colored clay and I want that to show through. So I'm going to use a clear glaze like this one. This clear glaze is made for cone six clay. So I know it's going to work in the kiln and it's not going to ruin anything. If you get the wrong glaze, it will melt off of your piece and adhere to the kiln shelf. It's gonna to turn to glass and stick your piece to the kiln shelf and make the person who is firing your piece very mad at you. So make sure that your glaze fits your clay body. Now the last part is where do you fire your stuff? I don't have a kiln. I live in a tiny apartment. What did I do? So there's always ceramic classes and places in most communities where you can get things fired. Email them, call them up, ask if they can fit your tiny ceramics in among the other things that go in the kiln. Now there, no one's gonna fire their kiln unless it's full and you need to make sure that your clay body is what they are that goes to the same cone as the rest of the stuff in their kiln you're also probably going to have to pay because you it, it takes an immense amount of energy to fire a kiln so you got to help pay the bills plus the person's labor for loading even though they're tiny your stuff in that kiln and if you have glazed it make sure you don't glaze the bottom or your stuff's gonna have to sit on a stilt and that's more labor. Right now, my tiny ceramics pieces, every time I get them fired, are between 60 and 70 cents a piece. So by the end, through bisque and glaze firing, it's gonna cost me around $1.30 to $1.50 for each piece. So, call around, make it happen, and don't give up. That's very important. You're not going to get things right the first time. You're going to have to keep going. So if you have any other questions, feel free to comment below. Or if you have recommendations of places where I should go and throw tiny pots, like anything in New York especially, or even Texas for when I visit, please comment down below and let me know. I hope to hear from you. Have a great day. Stay safe.